A and B. And you can have any combination of capital A's and capital B's and lowercase a's and lowercase b's, and that shows you all the different eye colors that result from those two genes. As a basic rule of thumb, the more capital letters you have, the darker the eye color. So if you have all capital letters, you have dark eyes. If you had all capital letters and you had dark eyes, and you marry someone with all capital letters, and they have dark eyes, what would your kids have? Dark eyes. Dark eyes. But, if you had all lowercase letters, you have light eyes, blue. I know someone who has like really, really Green. light eyes. Light. Dark blue. It just depends on where, which genes have the dominant and recessive. Mine, mine changed from blue to green. Yeah. Like, we all I don't know why that is. When you're like a baby, you have blue eyes. Every baby has yeah. blue eyes. Oh, yeah. It probably takes time to develop the proteins that cause the eye Yeah, color. the pigment hasn't fully developed. Yeah. But that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know why that is either. But probably the pigment develops at different rates in each eye. Do you have two different eye colors? My brother. Your brother My sister has a freckle in her eye. Hogan? I didn't know that. Um, all right, so anyway, that's, that's another example of polygenic inheritance. Two genes deciding a trait. That's what polygenic inheritance is. Most of your traits have multiple <coughs> genes. Um, and it gives you a bell curve, usually, of um, if you ever see a bell curve of uh, variations of people, then that's a polygenic trait, like intelligence. Intelligence is on a bell curve because there's so many different genes. You have very few people who are really, really smart, and very few people who are really deficient, and most people are in the middle somewhere. Athleticism. So a few really athletic, a few really not athletic, most people fall in the middle because there's many genes there. If there's ever a lot of genes for one trait, you end up with this bell curve. Interesting? Height is like that. Skin color is like this. Bell curve of possibilities. Okay, let's go on to sex linked traits. So a trait is sex linked if it uh, is carried on the X chromosome. Now, do y'all remember that you have 23 pairs of chromosomes? Do y'all remember that? My example up here on the board now only has three pairs, but in actuality, in a human cell, Sam, you with me here? Yeah. There are 23 pairs. Now, the first 22 pairs we call autosomes. Can you say autosomes? Autosomes. Autosomes are the first 22 pairs of chromosomes. But the last pair, the 23rd pair, those are your sex chromosomes. Okay. Um, the 23rd pair are your sex chromosomes. And they come in two types. Female has two what we call X chromosomes. And a male has an X and a Y. So if you're a female, you inherited these two X chromosomes. And the X chromosomes are actually rather large chromosomes. But the Y chromosome is a real small chromosome. The Y is much smaller than the X. These are your sex chromosomes. And you can see these in a karyotype. Let me, uh, let me put a karyotype on the screen. I should have this on a slide. Luckily, with Google, I can call one up. 
human karyotype. You know what a karyotype is? It's just a type of chromosome. Chart showing all the chromosomes. So here's a chart right here. See all the chromosomes there? Those are all the different pairs, and that's the sex chromosomes at the end. You see the X is bigger than the Y. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. This person's a male. <coughs> Look at all these karyotypes. What's this person? X and a Y. See the Y is smaller than the X? Mm -hmm. What about this person? Male. X yeah. and a Y. Oh, I, I don't know why they didn't put them together. <laughs> X and a Y. They're two X's. Yeah. Female. That's a female. There's an X and a Y. So, uh, you can tell the difference. You can tell if a kid's going to be a male or a female by looking at the chromosomes early in life. They have these chromosomal tests. You can get them at just a few weeks after pregnancy. Can you determine like, everything about your kid? <coughs> you could if we knew how to read the DNA that well. Oh. We don't know yet how to read the DNA that well, but that's coming. If someone took a look at my DNA, could they figure out my exact height? Uh, yeah, they can figure out everything about you if we knew how to read the DNA correctly. Oh. That's what they're doing right now. They're decoding what all the DNA means. Like, they don't know exactly where brown eyes are on the DNA yet, but they're getting there. They may they may know where brown eyes are on the DNA, but I don't know if, if they do or not. But that's what they're figuring out right now is where every gene is, what every gene means. Have you ever heard of the Human Genome Project? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Hold on, Sam had his hand up first. Yeah. Um, I know this is impossible, but what if you had two wives? Like, what do you people think would happen? It could happen um, by uh, by some kind of chromosomal abnormality, and, and then that, that cell would not survive. Because there's a lot of stuff on the X chromosome that's necessary. And so if you don't have an X chromosome, the cell won't, won't multiply. So that's a miscarriage? Well, it would never make it big it enough to be a, a miscarriage. Oh. It would automatically die as soon as it was fertilized. Sperm fertilizes eggs, cell dies, woman never knows fertilization happens. So that, that could happen, but w would not survive. Yeah. Speaking about how William asked if he could determine his height and his DNA, yeah. don't outer stimuli affect that too? That's true. The environment does have an effect on how tall you become. So your genes might tell you you're going to be 6'4", but if you eat wrong and you smoke and stuff like that, you're not going to be 6'4". So uh, the, the, uh, the environment has a big role. Uh, scientists have figured out that your genes count for about 50% and the environment counts for about 50%. So you don't necessarily turn out how your genes tell you to. If you do everything right, you will. Exactly. You will grow to your full potential. Right. Yeah. If you... If you, uh, <coughs> you, you ha you're born with a certain potential, and whether you meet it or not depends on your environment. Okay, so let, let's talk about there are genes on the X chromosome. Um, the X chromosome can, can carry a lot of stuff. We know in flies, the X chromosome carries an eye color gene for um, red eyes or white eyes. Big R equals red. I should use the red marker. I like being color coordinated. Okay, so big R equals red eyes. And little r equals white eyes. So if you're a fruit fly, have y'all ever seen fruit flies? Mm -hmm. Those little tiny flies that <coughs> get in the lunchroom and they bug you and you're like, ah. I like this fly. Those are fruit flies. And um, so you can have, here's a female X, X, and if she has two big R genes, that's a female with red eyes. 
and this is a female, big R, little r, she's also got red eyes because red is dominant over white. Question? Is there co-dominance anywhere? Not, not, well, it can be, but not in the case of eye color and fruit flies. And here is a fruit fly, a female. That's a white-eyed female. And here is a fruit fly, a male. Now, the male only has one X chromosome. So whatever's on the X chromosome determines his eye color. So that's a red-eyed male. The Y doesn't carry an eye color gene. So there's no heterozygous. There's no heterozygous for males. That's a, that's a red-eyed male. That's a white-eyed male. Does Y carry anything? Y does carry a few genes, but uh, they're usually not that important because if they were important enough for survival, it, the females wouldn't be alive because they don't have a Y chromosome. So Y only usually carries a few things that are only important for the male. <coughs> so do me a favor. See if you can do a Punnett square. You see a, a mating up there showing a, a Punnett square. See if you can do a Punnett square where you mate, let's say, let's mate that female with the normal male and see if you can pull that off on a Punnett square. And then we'll talk about a pedigree. Do that for 10 points. Mate that one and that one together. Um, didn't we do pedigrees already? Family trees? We have not done pedigrees. We need percentages. We'll do that next. No, just do just just do a Punnett square. I need to put that on. Do a Punnett square. Of this made it with that. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do pedigrees next. Do those next. Okay. Orange got it right. Oh. Does that look right? Okay. Peach got it right. Green got it right. Blue got it right. Anyone else? We're coming. couple. 
How many of the males would have wide eyes? 50. Half the males have it. For a male, you have a 50-50 chance of having wide eyes. That make sense? Now, in humans, there's a, uh, there's, um, so, uh, a few genetic disorders where uh, this happens. Um, one of them is called hemophilia. Have you ever heard of hemophilia? It's a bleeding disorder. If you have hemophilia and you cut yourself, it won't clot very quickly. And a lot of people with hemophilia cut themselves and they bleed to death. And they often, have you ever had a bruise before? Uh -huh. A bruise can be deadly if you have hemophilia, because a bruise is bleeding on the inside. And it'll and the bruise will just keep getting bigger and bigger as you bleed inside, and you can die from that. Most people with hemophilia have bad problems. Because they have a person with hemophilia. Hemophilia is little h. It's recessive. And for a woman to get he hemophilia, she has to have two copies of the gene. That's very rare. Usually, I mean, the gene is rare in the first place. So to have two copies of it, you almost never see a woman with hemophilia. You see a lot of women who are carriers of hemophilia. And if a woman who is a carrier of hemophilia has kids, she could pass it on to a son, and he could have, he'll, he'll get hemophilia because he only needs one copy. And if she passes this gene on to her son, he'll have hemophilia. And so you see a lot of males affected with hemophilia, but almost no females affected with hemophilia. They call it the royal disease. Because uh, Queen uh, Victoria in England had it, and she passed it on to a lot of her kids. So a lot of the royal family had it um, in England in the 1800s, and a lot of people died from it. Um, and now they've discovered that it's because this gene codes for a protein <coughs> that you need to help the blood clot. And so now people with hemophilia just give themselves injections of the protein. Just like a person with diabetes takes an injection of insulin. If you have hemophilia, you can inject the protein that you're missing and be fine. You so we basically cured hemophilia as long as you keep taking the injection. You only need to inject it when you're like bleeding. You're bleeding. No, you have to inject it every day or two days or something like that. I, I, I don't really know the schedule. It might be once a week, but you have to keep doing it. Do you have one of those like patches that the people with diabetes have? I don't know if they have that for hemophilia or not. So tell me this. If you're a hemophilic man, 10 points. If you're a hemophilic man and you mate with a normal woman who doesn't have hemophilia, you can call her X big H, X big H if you want to. What percentage of your kids will have hemophilia? Ten points if you can get this. Hemophilic man marries a normal woman without hemophilia. What percentage of the kids will have hemophilia? Ten points if you can get it. You can just give me the percentage. You don't have to show the Punnett square. You have to do a Punnett square to figure it out. I'm just looking for a number. Just a number, not a percentage. Yeah. You can give a number that is a percent. White, correct. Orange, correct. Peach, correct. Purple correct. Anyone else? Yeah. Green correct. Okay. Blue correct. Everybody? <coughs> Let me see y'all get this. Y'all good. So that's a zero percent. If you make X 
XHY, that's a hemophilic man, with XH, XH, that's a normal woman who doesn't have e either the hemophilia genes. Then, that's a carrier female. That's a normal male. That's a carrier female. And that's a normal male. Nobody's going to have it. But now, if this woman marries, she could pass it to her son. Let's say that woman right there marries a normal male. Here's the normal male. Then you can see that this kid right here, he's going to have hemophilia, one in four. Women don't usually get hemophilia because they need two copies. Men <coughs> are seen with these disorders. There's another sex-linked disorder in humans, uh, color blindness. Does anyone here colorblind? Blake, my mom. Blake, you colorblind? Really? So if you're colorblind, you want to see? A, I'm sorry. You want to see a colorblind test? Wait, what color is blue? It's Here's a colorblindness test. Wait, what colors? Colorblindness is uh. It's like same. Pretty common. It makes you see colors a little differently. Let's see a colorblindness test. Can you see that, Blake? Oh, that's kind of hard to see. See what? <laughs> what? 29. So, most of us see 29 there. Blake, you can't see that? No. Um, that's because a person who's colorblind cannot see uh, the difference between red and green. They both look kind of the same. Blake, are you okay? What was that? Christmas bus. 57. 57. Wait, what? <laughs> 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 We're in the we <laughs> So these colorblindness tests can help you see if you're colorblind. See what is? Like People who are colorblind just see uh, red and green as kind of a grayish. And um, colorblindness is interesting. It's it's sex linked, so it's carried on the X chromosome. You almost never see it in girls, but guys can have it. And so, Blake, you got that colorblindness gene not from your dad because your dad gave you the Y chromosome. Dads passed the Y on to their sons. Moms passed the X on to their sons. All your moms. So if you're colorblindness, she's carrying the colorblind gene. So that's interesting. Um, I don't think. Your mom's probably not colorblind because she would have to have two copies of the colorblindness gene. And, and, and it's pretty a pretty rare gene, so get two copies of it as a female. Uh, so you, you probably have, probably won't wouldn't have to. If you needed a, you do have to have a male that has it and a female that has it. You'd have to have a male that has it and a female carrier. And then you. And then they have a kid, and both of those get together in the kid. And then there's supposed to be the chance of it being male or female. That's right. Yep. Dang. Is this like revert back to the? Um, receding hairline thing that they were talking about <laughs> with the mother passes on the tray. Yeah, re receding hairline I think is a sex influence trait. I think it's a little bit different than a sex link trait. <laughs> um, it's, I looked it up and it said that uh, your hair genes were passed on the <laughs> female chromosome. Or on the X chromosome? It's going to be more towards your mom. If your mom has good hair, then you'll have good hair. Really? Yeah. What? I don't know about that. Hey, speaking of hair, look at look at this. These ladies either have a win you know what a widow's peak is? Oh, yeah. No, no. Widow's peak is if your hairline comes to a point, and no widow's peak is if it goes straight across. See how she's got a point right there? That's called a widow's peak. 
And the reason why they're showing it here is they want you to learn about pedigrees. That's the next thing we'll study. Isn't that like a dog food? Pedigree is a dog food, but what pedigree really means is family tree. So you need to know how to read pedigrees. So we're going to learn that right now. So, in a pedigree, a circle, y'all hang with me up here. Circle means female, square means male. Line between them means they mate. Line goes down, and this shows their kids. You go from left to right. First kid is a female. Second kid is a male. Third kid is a male. Fourth kid is a female. There you go. The kids can get married. This kid gets married. Then they have kids. A girl and a boy. This kid gets married. And they have twins. What? Two girls. Sometimes you see that. Um, how do pedigrees work? Well, what you'll do is you usually color in a square or a circle if the person is affected. And so maybe we color that in. That means this person has whatever condition that you're interested in. Like Widow's Peak. Widow's Peak is dominant. And so they've colored in all the squares that have big W's or circles that have big W's. But let's do, I want to do in my pedigree, I want to do a recessive, this, a recessive condition. Have you ever heard of cystic fibrosis? Yes. yes. Cystic fibrosis is a recessive genetic disorder that about 1 in 3,000 people have. And what it is, it's a, it's a gene that's faulty. It's supposed to make a protein that sits on the plasma membrane and transfers stuff back and forth into a cell. But it's screwed up if you have cystic fibrosis. You have two bad copies of the gene. And you don't pass stuff across your cell's membranes correctly, and the cells uh, don't develop correctly, and, you, and it ends up killing a person at a young age because they get real thick mucus that builds up in their lungs. Their mucus is too thick. It builds up in their lungs and digestive system and it traps bacteria and you get all kinds of infections and you usually die in, as a teenager. It's a terrible disorder. Have you all heard of cystic fibrosis? Yes. I know someone who has it. You know someone who has it? Who said that? Me. Blake? Who, who is, are they around? Uh, yeah, now? they go to the school that I used to go to. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a sad disease and it's, they don't have a cure for it. They're working on things that'll help. And it used to be, if you had cystic fibrosis 50 years ago, you only lived to age 4 or 5. And now you can live to age 20 or 30 with the new therapies they have, but you usually don't live that long. Is the person skinny? Yeah. They, uh, they usually have trouble digesting food and that sort of thing because of the thick mucus in their digestive system. And they have to do therapy and such like that. So it's kind of a sad... Sad disease. But let's make a uh, pedigree for cystic fibrosis. Let's say that it runs in this family. So every, every circle or square that I'm filling in has a, uh, is an affected individual with cystic fibrosis. That means they're little c, little c. That one's little c, little c, that one's little c, little c, and that one's little c, little c. <coughs> you can use this information to figure out a lot about the family. How do you do this? Well, we know that all these...
these other ones are not little c, little c, right? All these other ones don't have cystic fibrosis, which means they have at least one big C. So we can put big C's by all the ones that are not colored in. All of these have at least one big C. Now it's up to you to try to figure out what the other gene is. Like for instance, this one right here. We know it has a big C because it's not colored in. What's the other gene? Is it a big C? Is it a little C? Is there any way for us to know? Well, what you have to do is you have to look at the parents. This parent has two little C's. They have to pass one to their kid. Each parent passes one of its two genes to its kids. So this one had to get a little C from that parent. So this one's big C, little C. We can figure that out from the pedigree. Y'all see how that works? What about this parent right here? Does it have a little C? Yeah, the kid that's little c, little c. You, p you always pass one of your two genes to your children. So this one has to have a little c because it has a kid that's little c, little c. You see? <laughs> so you can figure out your kid's genetics? You can figure out what your parents and kids are by looking at the genes. Let's look at these two up here. We know they have a big C because they're not colored in. Do we know what the other gene is? Little C. Look, this kid is a little C, little C. It had to get one little C from one parent and one little C from the other parent. That means both these parents have it. We can put little C by both of its parents because it had two little Cs. So every other one would be these? Those three. Well, we know this kid got a big C from one parent. Did it have to get a big C from the other parent? Or did it have to get a little C from the other parent? We don't really know what this kid is. It doesn't have any kids of its own, so we can't look at them. And we, we know it got a big C from one parent, but it could have got either one from the other, so we don't really know what that is. This kid's the same way. We don't really know what that is. We call that C question mark. That's an unknown. What about these two, these parents? They both have little C's. And what about this kid? Are those not um, identical twins? Then? They're not. They're just fraternal twins. So it's unknown because. We know it got a big C from one parent, but it could have got either one of them from the other parent. We don't know which one. It could be big C, big C, or big C, little C. That's how to fill out a pedigree. Are you, why are y'all packing up? Don't we have five minutes on it? Okay, I'm going to give you a pedigree, and I want you, as in your group, to try and fill it out. What's that? Orange. I got a big, I got a big square there. Orange, you glad you said it down? Yes. It's a small pedigree. Let's do it for a a, a disease called dwarfism. Dwarfism in dogs is a recessive disorder. Dwarfism in dogs is little d, little d. And so draw this pedigree and fill out those four boxes. Hold on. I'm going to add to it. I'm going to add another generation. See if you can fill out those seven boxes with d's. Draw it on your sheet. 
and see if, see how many uh, see if you can fill out each one. Do it with your group. I'll give you 60 seconds. I'll give you 20 points if you get them all right. I'll give you 10 points if you miss one. And I won't give any points if you miss one. Go ahead now. Are y'all working with your group to solve the pedigree? Put the hat have a Yeah. Yeah. Green missed more than one, they don't get any points. Bring it up. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give 10 to Orange. Purple missed more than one. Twenty for Peach. What? Heck yeah. Oh, we're out of time.